Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Ticket. In today's video, what we are gonna do is we are gonna be doing a full comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro. Now, this is the smaller 12 Pro model. There's also a 12 Pro Max coming out soon. But the Pro Max and the Pro, which is this one, are 99% the same smartphone. This is just a smaller version. So this comparison also fully applies to the Pro and the Pro Max. So let's do a full comparison of every aspect of these smartphones and see which one is better. People are wondering, which one do I get? The Note 20 Ultra, Samsung's flagship, or the iPhone 12 Pro, Apple's flagship. After watching this video, you'll know exactly which phone is better and why. Let's dive in. Now, the first thing you wanna talk about has to do with the design. If you look at two of these phones right here, one thing is crystal clear. When it comes to the frontal design, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra comes ahead. It simply looks more futuristic. The iPhone still persists in having a notch that does house a powerful Face ID system, but it simply does not look as futuristic as this with the small cutout on the top. And if you look at the bezels carefully, you'll notice the bezels on the iPhone are in fact thicker than the Note 20 Ultra. So Note 20 Ultra certainly gives the impression of being a more futuristic phone just by looking at it. Now, when we flip these phones over, okay, I do have to say they both look gorgeous, okay? I like the design, there's no problem. What I like here is both phones have a matte finish in the rear, so your fingerprints don't cause any trouble when you tap it, it doesn't have all these smudges uh, we have large camera cutouts here and here. This one here is a little bit larger, but it doesn't matter. They're both great cameras. We'll talk about the cameras in more detail in a minute. But let me talk about one more thing. When you look at the side profile, here's what I like about this phone. Uh, the side is also matte. The shine over here is minimum. But with this phone, unfortunately, they decided to go with a shiny uh, side profile, which means this is just a magnet for fingerprints. Look at that. Already have all these smudges, looks very ugly. Now, we, I know that we uh, hide our phones inside a case, but some, some people don't. And that's when this phone from the sides actually feels a little bit cheap. Now, when you wipe it down with a piece of cloth, it looks amazing. But as soon as you touch it, boom, you've got all your fingerprints. So I do wish they had gone with a matte finish on the side as well kind of how they did with their cheaper model. This is the iPhone 12. It has a nice and matte finish, no fingerprints, okay? But this one has all these reflective aluminum on the side. Anyway, let's move on and talk about other stuff. I will let you know both of these phones have amazing stereo speakers. Uh, with the Note 20, we have one stereo speaker at the bottom, one on the top, same thing with the iPhone. Let me log into this with my Face ID here. So we have a speaker at the bottom and on the top, great stereo experience. Neither phone has a headphone jack, and of course, both phones have IP68 grade water resistance. When it comes to build and design, they both feel like a million dollars. The Note 20 Ultra does take a lead when it comes to the overall design and the futuristic look, and also the fact that it doesn't have as much shine on the sides as the iPhone. Now let's move on and talk about the processor, memory, storage, and pricing. All right, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 sports a powerful Snapdragon 865 Plus CPU with 12 gigabytes of RAM, okay? Nice and easy operation. It can be acquired with 128 gigabytes of storage for the base model with an available 512 gigabyte option. The starting price for the Note 20 Ultra is $1,300. That is in fact a lot of money for this phone, but almost always they have a good deal which reduces the price closer to $1,100 for these Note smartphones. Now with the iPhone 12 Pro, we have $1,000, 12 Pro Max, $1,100. We do have quite a powerful A14 Bionic chip that runs on this six gigabytes of RAM. The base model comes just like the Note with 128 gigabytes storage, but you don't get micro SD expansion as you get on the Note 20 Ultra. 
with the Note 20 Ultra, if you buy storage, you can add more later. With the iPhone, if you buy a 120 gigabyte model, 128 gigabyte option. So in that sense, when it comes to expansion, the Note 20 Ultra gets a lead. When it comes to processing power, the iPhone gets a lead. The processor is simply more powerful than the one we have on the Note 20 Ultra. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you guys, both phones have 5G capability. Now, let me quickly show you some benchmarks to showcase the difference in processing power. All right, so I just ran the benchmark, the single core 945, multi-core 391. Single core 1605, multi-core 1469. Considerably faster, processing here which is going to have its benefits when you are doing super heavy duty stuff and professional level stuff such as editing videos on your iphone which is something you can do you can easily edit 4k videos on this one without a stutter i tried the same thing over here there is some stutter and with this one you can just do multiple layers of editing with no hiccups so it has its benefits and of course you're going to get the best gaming experience on this guy Okay, we cannot hide from the fact. Now I do wanna move and talk about the actual display. This one here is a gorgeous, stunning, large 6.9 inch display. It's got a high crisp resolution, 1440 by 3088, 496 pixels per inches. Now this iPhone Pro here is the smaller model. We have a 6.1 inch display. It is gonna be a Super Retina XDR display. The resolution on this one is 2532 by 1170. If you go with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the larger version of this one is gonna be 6.7 inches, which is also a large display. Now the quality of these displays is almost equal. They're both OLED, they're both high quality, accurate colors, super bright, super sharp, and super crisp. But we have a problem. The Note 20 Ultra has, if I go to my settings over here, it's gonna have that 120 hertz display refresh rate, which is gonna make the phone feel smoother as you interact with the phone. So when you swipe over, there's a certain sense of smoothness the iPhone simply cannot match because this phone does not have 120 hertz refresh rate, which should be a highlight of a flagship smartphone, no matter what anybody says in 2020. So we don't have that. So in that scenario, not having the 120 hertz, it loses some points in the display department and it has a notch on the top. So that also takes away from the viewing experience when you're watching a movie full screen. This one right here, uh, the little, little cutout is much less intrusive. So in display, the Note 20 wins, hands down, let's move on. All right, so let's now talk about the camera. Now it's kind of hard to talk about the cameras these days because all these phones have fantastic camera systems. Triple camera system, triple camera system. You have a wide camera, super wide, and a telephoto for zooming in. Same situation here. When it comes to the quality of the photos, because the main camera on this guy is 108 megapixels, you are gonna get crisper photos than the 12 megapixel main camera. However, megapixels are not the full story. What I'm gonna tell you right now is either phone is gonna shoot amazing photos for the average consumer. No average consumer can tell the difference professionally between these photos. So when it comes to camera capability, I think this one's a little bit better, but when it comes to video capability, this one takes the lead. I think it takes better video than the Note 20 Ultra, but not by a huge margin, unless, let me just go inside, I'm gonna show you something right now. If I go to my settings, if I go into my camera right here, Okay, and if I do the same thing here, let me go to my camera settings. Let me go to video and go into my camera settings. You'll notice that we have a lot of options to record video. This one can go up to 8K. This is limited to 4K. However, this one has the HDR video option, which is a 10-bit high dynamic range video recording capability. This is gonna give you super, super quality videos, but then you're not getting the 8K over here, but you are getting similar resolutions on both of these cameras when it comes to videos. I just noticed that the overall recording experience 
with the iPhone was a little bit more smoother and the focusing is a little bit better. But just by a slight margin, nothing dramatic as I said. For the average consumer, whether for photo taking or video taking, these guys both are gonna offer a flagship experience. No question about that. Next thing I wanna talk about is a software. Now again, this is Android, this is iOS. Complete customization available, minimum customization available. Now iOS recently got an update. You can now go in here and you can add widgets. Okay, that's great. You can add a bunch of widgets. You can customize your home screen now. You can have things like that. With this one, that already was the case, but also you can pinch the screen, go into the theme store, and download thousands of different themes to customize your phone to crazy levels. Just one example, your phone can look just like this if you want to look uh, like that, okay? So this is more customizable, less customizable. The good thing with this one is the ecosystem, the app ecosystem is better when you go to App Store, when you go to Play Store, what you're gonna find here is more applications that are simply better, especially games. You even have an Apple Arcade section that gives you 100, 100 free games that all run with no stutter at 60 frames per second. That's not to say this phone can't do gaming. It does it very well. But the iPhone ecosystem is gonna give you more gaming options and slightly superior options. Additionally, this phone has a magic weapon at the bottom right here. We have that S Pen. I'm gonna pull it out. So right here, now I can press this button. It brings up a menu. I can create a note and I can start writing as if I was writing on a piece of paper. Let me pick a pencil here. There we go, okay, look at that. Precision writing, I can change the size, pick a pencil, whatever you wanna do, you can do it on this one. Can't do it here, it's a dream. Now the S Pen is more than just a drawing tool. It does precision drawing and writing, but you can navigate the phone. You have access to Air Command. You can use these uh, cool tricks to take screenshots of whatever you want. Impossible to do on the iPhone again because of the S Pen. Additionally, if I go to my settings, if I go into my advanced features and S Pen, the S Pen also allows you to control the phone with the S Pen as a remote control. For example, uh, if I were in my gallery, let me launch a photo. If I press a button, it can go to the next photo. That's a remote control functionality I can use from a distance. If I double tap, it goes back. I can also control, play, pause, music with this as well. So S Pen is unique to the Note 20 Ultra, immediately enhances the value in software, I think Note 20 Ultra does win when it comes to productivity and customization, but this one does win when it comes to the ecosystem. Now let's talk about the battery. In the battery department, overall, you get a full day of battery with medium to heavy use on both smartphones. Now I haven't spent too much time with the iPhone yet. It does have a slight lead in battery life by 30 minutes to one hour. Nothing special, nothing dramatic. Both of these phones offer wireless charging. Note 20 does have faster wired charging. You can charge this phone from zero to 100 within one hour. This one takes one hour and 45 minutes with wired charging and that's fast charging. Now one thing the Note has is wireless power share. So you can use the back of this phone to charge other products. If I put the earbuds back here, it's gonna charge my earbuds. If I grab the iPhone and put the iPhone here, it's gonna charge the iPhone. iPhone doesn't have that option, but it does have that brand new MagSafe option. There is a magnet in here. So if you buy the proper accessory, you do get a magnetic connection. That's the MagSafe uh, that Apple has talked about. So this one doesn't have it. Now this is still gonna work over here, but the magnetic attachment is not as strong. With the iPhone 12, this was built for it. So this kind of accessories, if you wanna use them, and if you're interested in these guys, you wanna buy the iPhone. But it's not a huge deal. I prefer this utility much more. The fact that you can charge other products using your phone, all right? Anyway, let's move on to the next feature. Now, when it comes to biometrics, the Note 20 is something I prefer. It's got the in-display fingerprint sensor. So there's a fingerprint sensor hidden inside the display nobody can see. Double tap here, okay, let me double tap. 
I can press over here on the screen, reads my fingerprints, goes right inside. I like the futuristic appeal. With this one, we have the face ID. So I'm going to turn this off, just lift it up, look at it. It's going to unlock the phone, as you just saw. Now, this is actually a very powerful technology, but look at it. It's not hidden at all. It's in this large notch. With this one, it is simply hidden, and that's what makes this more appealing to me. But as far as security is concerned, they both work flawlessly. It's just a matter of choice which one you like. All right, so now let's tie everything together to find out which one of these smartphones is the better device. The Note 20 is $1,300. The iPhone 11 Pro is $1,000. Pro Max is $1,100. So there's a price difference. But the Note 20 Ultra overall does have a few more advantages. For example, it offers wireless power share and also offers faster wired charging. It also happens to have a more aggressive camera setup with powerful zooming capabilities and also 8K recording. The screen is 120 hertz. That's something you cannot ignore. This one doesn't have it. And of course, you certainly cannot ignore uh, the prowess of the S Pen, which is a fantastic tool for creativity and productivity. Both phones have 5G. I think the design on this guy is a little bit better. So it does have several advantages over the iPhone. Now, what advantage does the iPhone have over the Note 20? It has a powerful processor, and that's basically all there is to it. Like I said, the cameras on both of these smartphones overall are flagship quality. They both are water resistant. They both have wireless charging. The quality of the display on both of these smartphones is top notch. But when we compare them side by side and we look at all the metrics, we do conclude that the Note 20 Ultra is the better smartphone, period. It is gonna be a little bit more expensive and that's the only problem. So if you wanna save some money and still get another flagship, you can go with these guys. With this one, the smaller version, you're saving $300. If you get the larger version, you're saving $200 over this guy. So the Note 20 is the more comprehensive phone with a few extra features, but that does not mean the iPhone Pro is a joke. This is a solid smartphone. Anybody thinking of buying this because they lust after an iPhone should give it a try. But if you just ask me which one of these phones is better, I'm just gonna say Note 20 Ultra based on facts. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.